Hello, this is Justin Knowlton. I'm the CEO of Chill IT. I'm going to do a quick series on cyber security. I'm going to cover four topics. Uh, am I a target? What are the risks to my business? Root causes of cyber incidents? And what can I do about it? So this is the first in that series. So the, it's going to be, am I a target of a cyber security incident happening to me? So the first thing is that there's lots of evidence that um, Australian small businesses are being targeted. Um, the Australian Signals Director, through its Australian uh, Cyber Security Centre, uh, are acutely aware and have started doing surveys and um, developing specific policies for small business because they see that small businesses are being impacted. Um, and there's also a fair bit of research that shows Australia's are, businesses are actually one of the more targeted um, small business sectors in the world, simply because of the, um, I guess, the high value of the Australian economy and Australian small businesses relative to some other parts of the world. And you can see also there from Business Australia, a representative group for Australian businesses, that they also see that uh, Australian small businesses are clearly a target. So uh, why, why are Australian small businesses a target? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, um, value is relative. And what I mean by that is that for, for third world hackers, um, and there's a lot of people out there trying to get information um, and trying to deceive um, employees to give away passwords and so forth, for, for a lot of those people, relatively small amounts of dollars are still substantial. So $100 plus, you know, particularly if you're getting to the thousands or tens of thousands, is a lot of money for someone in um, some parts of Africa or Asia or South America. So uh, it's quite easy to see that, that that money is substantial for them. So um, they're quite happy to do that. And it's very low cost. So um, the, the barriers to entry are very low. Once they've got a, a PC and they've got access um, to some level of internet, then they're able to, um, I guess, do lots of low cost approaches. There some of them are quite um, unsophisticated and they're obvious to spot but they get smarter as they go along and there are literally tens of thousands of people uh, in this space. The other key thing is the data is valuable in its own right so um, a recent um, st uh, study basically showed that 58% of all stuff that's sold on the internet is actually data. So some of the people who are trying to get your information aren't necessarily looking to steal from you directly but if they can get uh, your, your name, usernames, passwords, other personally identifiable information, then that's for sale uh, on the dark web. And the reason why that's for sale is they can then take that data, aggregate it with other data that they may have gotten from somewhere else, and all of a sudden they've built a profile of you or your business or one of your employees so they can do some social engineering. So data is really valuable. Um, so don't think just because you're a small business, you're not going to be targeted. The, um, the evidence at the moment is that uh, small businesses are, are very clear targets to be targeted, um, often because they think they're not going to be targeted and therefore they don't take the precautions they need um, to make them sure they're safe. Uh, the next one is the number of transactions and data you collect. So even for a, a relatively small business, um, but as soon as you get into a business where you've got probably five, six, 10, 20, 30 people, all of a sudden you're dealing with a lot of data and a lot of information and doing a lot of transactions. So in terms of data, you're collecting a lot of client information, you're collecting information from suppliers and stakeholders, um, you've got residential and business information, you've got addresses, you've got email numbers, email addresses, phone numbers, um, you potentially have financial information, credit card details. So there's a lot of information there that's um, becomes that is potentially personally identifiable and that's really valuable as I said before. So they're trying to get access to that information. Um, they also um, can get access to financially sensitive information. So that could be bank account details, credit card details, trust account details. Um, so that financially sensitive information um, could actually lead to a very direct um, exposure to your business. So just the sheer number of transactions means that you're a very, very good take because you have a lot of information that they can use online if they can get in there. And one of the bits of study which I found a little bit scary most recently that I heard was that basically someone who get, gets into your system and they've usually logged in because they've got your password, those people can spend up to a year within your system just 
gathering data, collecting information um, before they're even found out. So that's in which they're collecting all this information which they can then put on the dark web and sell or they can use for their own malicious purposes to try and um, do some social engineering to um, take some of your business. That actually leads to the very next one, which is financial protection. Um, so financial protection is really how good are your processes. So in any business, um, there's, you know, there's credit cards, there's invoices um, that you send out to clients, there's bills to be paid, there's bank accounts, trust accounts, there's, you may have an e-commerce site, and there's probably a range of others as well. So what they're trying to do is get information so they can intercept into some of these processes so they can get access. So um, it's quite common to see uh, fraud on invoices where they change the details on an invoice um, and it may be sent out from you and it, they, it gets intercepted, the details are changed and the person thinks they're paying you um, or you think you're paying someone uh, who's a, who's a well-trusted supplier but actually the bank accounts are for somewhere completely different and going to go into some other malicious third party. So you need to be aware of that. So all that information they gather helps them either directly or indirectly target um, the financial information, which is really what they're trying to do. At the end of the day, they want money. Um, so it's just the different ways in terms of how they do that. So do you have a good approval process? Are you checking um, uh, with bank accounts? Are you just letting are you checking that if someone says, hey, my bank account details have changed, are you calling them on their normal office number to confirm that's actually legitimate or is it just a spurious email where um, they're basically conned one of your staff to change the banking account details? So all these things are risks um, if they understand who you are, what you're doing, what customers you're talking to. And, yeah, and again, they range from quite obvious ones that you can pick up to quite sophisticated um, examples of where they do that. Probably the next thing is just to recognise that people are the weakest link. So you have to recognise the uh, digital footprint uh, that's, that, that exists today. So your company will have a massive digital footprint in terms of the applications it, it uses, um, the databases, Microsoft 365, Google, Zoom, Netflix, whatever it's using. Um, and then there's a whole lot of shadow IT in there as well. So there's often, quite often, um, applications potentially say something like Grammarly or MailChimp um, or other services that are also um, are used um, for your business um, that may not actually be secured, um, but your people are putting passwords in there. And they could be using the same password for LinkedIn um, while they look up a potential supplier or potential customer. Um, as the password they've got to one of your systems, which actually houses your data. Um, and then there's, of course, all the personal um, personal um, digital footprints that are there. So, you know, people are people. There's a whole lot of things that people do um, in, in their personal life or in, a digital, um, in a digital world. Obviously, they buy things on Gumtree and eBay. There's, you know, every second ad on TV is a relationship one. Um, there's adult content. Um, there's, you know, obviously lots of games uh, and gaming that happens. There's gambling, there's entertainment such as Netflix and Stan, etc. Obviously, and then, then there's, there's other applications like Zoom, MailChimp, Gremlin, and there's, and there's a thousand of those. And then there's just local ones like uh, I recently joined up to the Coffee Club app because um, uh, I've got a Chamber of Commerce meeting that meets every second Thursday. Um, and therefore, you, we go to the Coffee Club each time. Um, so there's a bit of a discount, some rewards. So, of course, I signed up to it. Um, so you just need to be aware um, that all these things are potentially uh, on your employees' um, laptops, on their phones, um, and also, even if they're separate on different devices, the reality is they could be um, uh, they could be using the same passwords. You also need to be aware that um, often people in your business are easily identifiably targetable from your website. So a lot of websites. Um, have you know who the um, management team are, um, who the general manager or CEO or financial controller or accounts person, salespeople, etc. All that information is typically on a lot of websites, so it means that they can you know the um, the hackers can can basically scrap that information and when they want to send an email to your business, um, then they can they know who the CEO is. So for example. When I first joined Chill IT three and a half years ago, um, literally within the first week, our finance person got an email from the CEO, Justin, 
um, to say, oh, can you please pay this bill? It's really important. It's for a few thousand dollars. Um, so luckily, you know, obviously we trained, she was trained quite well, so she came and said, oh, this doesn't seem right. Did you actually ask for this to be paid? And of course I hadn't. So it doesn't take very long from the pickup that there's been a change on your website, to, particularly when there's new people involved. Uh, and that comes down to that social engineering. So once they've got information, so if they've got some personal identifiable information they can get from multiple sources, potentially um, from somewhere like a LinkedIn or a Facebook, um, if they've got um, other information, they can target individuals in your business um, uh, quite subtly to try and get them to pass over either more information or to give a give a password. So, in a nutshell, um, is your business a target? Well, yes, it is a target. This is a summary. I won't go into it any any further than this, but basically, your business is a target. Um, you're attractive for people to try and get information. Attractive from a financial sense. The barriers to entry to for people to get involved in trying to seek your information are very very low and happens from all any anywhere in the world um, so second world third world countries as well as first world countries um, sometimes the organized crimes involved but the reality is that um, that your business is a target and you need to take steps to address that so thank you very much that's the end of the first session